Welcome to Courage on the Pitch. North Carolina champions again! Here's Megan O'Keefe. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Courage on the Pitch presented by Wake Orthopedics Urgent Care. And we have got, yet again, an awesome episode for you guys this week. Uh, so our guests on the show, two special guests, Carson Pickett and Riley Basin will be joining us. And uh, this is going to be an awesome conversation. So I don't want to give too much away, but a little bit of a preview. Uh, April is Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month. And obviously, this is a cause that's near and dear to Carson's heart, as well as Riley and all of her teammates. So we talk all about uh, the importance of this month and her, you know, wanting to use her platform to raise awareness of this really important community. So uh, we talk all about that and a little bit, we get a little bit of an inside peek at how the team's doing. Uh, we are almost done with the Challenge Cup. The team is sitting nice and pretty in first place uh, of the Eastern Division. So real quick, let's get a little bit of a recap of the past week before we dive into our conversation. So uh, we have been in a little bit of a FIFA window right now. So the Courage actually haven't had a game in, gosh, like 10 days, almost two weeks. Crazy. Uh, but we have had some incredible representation from our Courage players for their national team. So we've got Katie Bowen, who was showing up big time for New Zealand. She got two starts in those friendlies and has just been crushing it for New Zealand. Obviously, Denise O'Sullivan has been representing Ireland in their international friendlies, uh, Carolyn and Dabinia on the Brazilian side, Carolyn got an assist. And then I want to give a massive shout out to Deanna Ordonez, who has made her debut with the Mexican national team and her very first touch of the game that she went into. She dribbled down the field and scored a goal within seconds of getting on the field. So she also had a second goal in that match. So big shout out to D for getting two goals in her uh, Mexican national team debut. So that's a quick little recap of what some of our players have been up to. But uh, without further ado, let's get into our conversation with Carson and Riley. Courage on the pitch. Off the field. Thanks to Riley and Carson joining us on the show. What's up, ladies? Hey. Yay. <laughs> nice green. Green color. Oh, matching. It's like mm-hmm. monthly on St. Patty's Day, but he's the luck. Um, so before we get into our conversation, which I'm really excited about, um, let's check in on the team. How's everyone doing? You know, we got two games left of the Challenge Cup and just happen to be sitting in first place. Uh, I've been in there, but how are you guys feeling? How's the team vibing? Yeah, I think it's been great. Um, I think when we started, I'm going to be brutally honest, um, before our first game, we were all like, okay, like, this will be interesting in the beginning, just because like, there's so many new people and it's not better. It was never better or worse. It was just like, we had no idea what to expect. Um, And then the first game came and it just like clicked. And I feel like we were popping and I don't know, just um, the team seemed to gel rather quickly. And I think that that's obviously super important when you have so many new people and then so many veterans as well. So I want to, you know, dive right into the importance of this month. And for you, Carson, uh, you posted the most beautiful Instagram and mm-hmm. Riley as well. You made this awesome TikTok. So everyone check it out. Give me a little plug. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Carson, for your Instagram that you posted, you know, you know, spreading awareness for this month, um, limb loss and limb difference awareness month. Um, mm-hmm. so for you, let's just start with, you know, why is this month so important to you? What does it, what does it mean for you? Yeah, I feel like, um, I'm just going to be like brutally honest. I feel like for the longest time and I'm 28 years old and for the longest time, I just didn't use my platform. I, I wouldn't even say I used it well. Like I just didn't use it. And um, because I felt like I had it good and I didn't have many problems and growing up wasn't like too hard for me. Um, it just didn't, it didn't click for me that there's people out there who would struggle with it and not feel like they belong or fit in. And, um, my parents raised me, there's just two different ways to do it. And especially now with social media, um, we didn't have social media back in, back then. So like, to, for a little kid to reach out to like a professional athlete and stuff, it's so much easier now, or like a family to reach out to different families. It's so much easier to find people to connect with. And like, we just didn't have that when I was younger. Um, and so my parents raised me just to not be different. Um, and I think it was amazing. I, I love the way that they raised me. Um, they didn't want me to feel like I was different or um, didn't want me to feel like I didn't fit in because of my arm or I couldn't do things that other people could do. And then there's the other way about like 
wanting the kid to know that they're different and to be able to, um, when a kid asks what happened to their arm, not to be like shy about it because they know and they've talked about it and they've had conversations about it. So um, there's just, there's so many different ways to parent and I'm not a parent, so I can imagine how hard it was. Um, But that's how my parents raised me. And I I appreciate that they raised me that way just because I never felt limited in anything I did. Um, So yeah, for the longest time, I just didn't use my platform. I, it, didn't really occur to me that there's pe- people who are different than me um, and struggle with confidence and posting pictures and and meeting new people. Um, and so just th- like the other day, I went into Riley's room and my parents like never have never told me to do this, like to do anything. They never forced me to do anything. It, they want everything to be on my own time. And I went into Riley's room and I was like, I have a weird request. And I was like, I need you to like take a picture of me. I like, I know I have a million pictures of my arm, but mm-hmm. of like really just showing my arm in a picture because like still for me, I don't like love it. If I um, have kind of a picture that hides it a little more. I'm probably going to choose that just because I don't know, like, that's just how it is. And so I went into a room and I was like, I just need help with this. Um, it's something I'm like not super comfortable with, but I want to use my platform and to be able to show people that you can put your arm in pictures and it doesn't mean that you're any less than anyone else. Um, so she's obviously just the best friend and just did exactly what I wanted to do and supported me. And Um, when I posted it, my mom called me and she was like, I can't tell you how proud I am of you. And that's like, out of everything you've ever done, she said, I think that that's like the best thing that as a parent that we could have seen. And it was in your, it was in your own time. And, um, I appreciate that you're, you're using your platform, um, the best way that you can. And so when she said that, it kind of had me thinking like, I need to continue to use my platform and there's so many other things I can do. Um, so that's why it's important for me. Um, (laughs) And just when the picture of me and Joseph went viral a couple of years ago, uh, the messages I got from so many different countries and people w- was just like insane, like countries I've like never heard of before. Um, they were like, I have one arm, like I saw your story in the newspaper or on the news. And I just that like really showed me that I have like value to be able to, I don't know, help people, even if I don't can't directly help them, even if it's through social media. Yeah. Wow. I got chills just like (laughs) having you walk us through that whole experience. And for you, Riley, like that moment when Carson came up to you, obviously you guys are super close friends. You've experienced a lot, but I want to go back to that moment when Carson walked in your room and was just like, Hey, can you help me with this? Something that like, you know, she said it was very vulnerable for her. What did that Mm -hmm. mean for you to be that person that she wants to come to, to do something like that? Yeah. I mean, I was honored for sure. I mean, I feel like some people ask me to take photos, but I think when like, it's, important and like needs to be shared um it just kind of hits home a little bit more and just makes me like that much more eager to do it um but yeah I mean I sometimes I like I just forget that she has one (laughs) arm honestly like if we're being quite honest um and like I had no idea like April was this awareness month until she said something because she just never brings it up and I feel like it's so important to share that and for her to be able to use her platform for that is just like next level amazing. Um, But yeah, I mean, I just like, she's able to do so many things that I just, I just don't even think sometimes like, she's just like, it's Carson, you know, like, I don't, I'm not like, Oh, the one armed girl, you know, like she (laughs) just can usually do everything. So yeah, I mean, it's just like a really special time to be able to highlight it. Yeah. Um, Carson, I mean, I was going to ask Riley a similar question, but I feel like you segued into this. Have there been moments you've looked back or even currently in the past that you've surprised yourself? You're like, oh, I didn't think I was going to be able to do this, but holy shit, I just did this. Like, are there moments that you surprise yourself? Um, I, Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there are moments. They're not like massive things I remember, to be honest, mm-hmm. just because um, for other people, they would be because they can't, maybe can't think I can't do it or they think I can't do it. And I just don't ever think, yeah, I just like don't ever think that way. So like when I do something, it's not like surprising to me just because I'm like, well, there's no other way to do it. I like, I have to get it done. Um, And I just don't want to, I just don't like asking people for help. I don't like burdening people. And um, I never like feeling like I can't do something. And sometimes it's, it's more like about me feeling that way, but sometimes I just don't want to put someone in like an awkward position or anything like that, especially if they don't know me or they're not one of my best friends. I think that it can be like really challenging conversation. And sometimes I think it's a bit uncomfortable. Um, even with people on the team, if I'm next to somebody and like, I need to cut 
a steak or something like it's uncomfortable for me to ask unless it's like one of my really good friends. And so I think that that's something I want to get better at is just like being able to ask like for help if I actually need it. Um, and I think through this month, that's something I'm going to try and like work on myself, but I like would challenge other people to do that as well. Um, that it's okay to ask for help. And it doesn't mean that you're any less of a person if you ask someone to cut your steak for you. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, there's been things, I mean, specifically when I was younger, um, like the monkey bars, my dad was like, you're going to cross the monkey bars. Cause I would just sit there and watch kids do it. And I'm like, I just want to do it, but I have like no courage to get up there and do it. And he was like, we're going like, you're going to do it. And I fell many times. It wasn't like he was under me catching me. Like he was like, well, if you fall, you fall. And that's how you're going to learn. <laughs> and so I think that those are the things that I love about my parents is like, if he was there to catch me, I probably wouldn't be as eager to do it. Cause I knew he'd, I know he'd always catch me, but if I fall, I'm like, well, I don't want to fall again. So like, it mm. just makes me want to do those things even more. Um, so I think that again, everything about my childhood and, and who I, who I am today is like reflective of my parents. I just like, I'm so appreciative of, of everything they've done. And I told my mom on the phone the other day when she called me, I was like, I can't imagine, like, I just can't imagine being you. And like, she's always saying like, I'm so proud of you and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, I just like, I'm so amazed by how they parent parented me and like the things that they had to go through that I wouldn't even have a clue about. And um, I'm not in that position. So I, I'm sure there's so many times that it was like really challenging and I just wouldn't have a clue. So um, until you get older, you don't really think that way. Um, yeah. 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 And you're able to look back and be yeah. like, I know I've had those moments with my mom. She's like, you'll thank me later. I'm like, yeah. 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 And you're like so mad at them. I'm like, no, I'll never thank you. <laughs> literally 10 years later. Thank you so much. You knew best. <laughs> How do you do it? Literally. Yeah. Um, I know you've, you've, I've heard you tell this story before, but I think it's a really cool like turning point for you in your soccer career, mm -hmm. you know, growing up the way you raised your, your parents raised you, you know, you loved, never made you feel different at all, but you were put in obviously situations where you're playing soccer and you had media requests and you wanted mm -hmm. to talk about, you know, I'm, I'm the soccer player, I'm the outside back, whatever have you. And then they obviously wanted to turn the story around into, you know, your arm. And mm -hmm. so what was that conversation you had with your mom where mm -hmm. it kind of the flip switched for you? Yeah. Yeah. So if people haven't heard the story, um, I was, we were getting ready for the NCAA tournament. And so it's like, it's such an exciting time. And there's media always at training and on the phone and doing, everyone's doing interviews. And I remember there's a group of veterans on the team and me, and they, the specific, um, the specific reporter, like wanted to talk to us individually about like the college cup and like how we're excited. And I was just like, so excited and like honored to be a part of that group. And I was just like, I remember like calling my parents and being like, oh, I'm like with like these veterans that are incredible players. And I just was like so amazed by them. And so when I got that request, I was so excited. And one by one, they went and it was all about the, the NCAA tournament. And then I was last and it was solely about my arm. And at the time, I just didn't understand. I didn't understand why everything had to be about my arm and nothing. It was nothing to do with soccer. Um, I'm like, you could have just thrown in, are you excited or something? Like <laughs> anything. Yeah, just like mask it a little. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it was just, just about my arm. And I just remember being like mortified. I'm like, I, I was so excited about this. And all it had to do was like about my arm. And so I remember calling my mom being so upset about it. And um yeah she just she honestly probably changed my life that day and she was like you have a platform that um you have you don't even understand yet and there's so many people out there that um you can help directly indirectly and she's like you just don't know the power you have and that conversation honestly did change my life and my perspective on limb difference and um I'm always wondering why other people I'm like, well, this person can change this, that and the other, but like, I'm actually the only one with one arm. And so that falls on me. And I think that that was something I didn't want to carry for a long time. I didn't want the pressure of, you know, like helping people because sometimes I was struggling myself. Mm -hmm. um, and that's like the immature, obviously the immature part of me when you're 21 in college. Yeah. Um, I didn't really care about other people, to be honest, <laughs> and how they felt when I was still struggling with it. Um, but yeah, that day like really changed my life because she just she just put it in perspective for me. Yeah. And it was really cool. It was a really cool conversation. 
Yeah, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. Wow. So Riley, for you, what is, what is it about Carson that you can kind of give us an inside peek on? Because I feel like Carson's so like humble about, you know, her mm -hmm. success despite, you know, her limb difference. Like, like you said, you forget that she even only has one arm, but what is it about Carson that, you know, inspires you or something that like she wouldn't talk about herself, mm -hmm. but, you know, is an important aspect of her story. Yeah. I think, I don't know. I was just thinking like, even today, like, at gym, like, I think that's like one of the one places where like you would think like, oh, she has to have like such a modified lift because she has one arm. So you're like, you're not going to load up one side or like do completely like the same lift as everybody else. And it's like, I don't know. I, there's been so many times where I feel like she does everything. And then as soon as it like, there's just absolutely zero percent she can do it, then she'll ask for help. Like she will try and try and try until she can't do it. And so I think that's one thing that I like love about her is like, not that she doesn't ask for help because she's stubborn, but I think she just like, she doesn't want to be like different in that way. Like, I think she is like, I can do everything everybody else can. Like, just cause I have one arm, like I can still back squat. Like my arm can still reach around the bar, you know? And so I think just, there's been so many instances where I'm like, she just gets over that hurdle and I just like really respect her for that because she doesn't ask to like get special treatment, you know? And I think that says a lot about her because I think a lot of people who do have one limb, like could easily fall into that rut. And so I think that's just like always been like an amazing thing for me to witness. Um, and I feel like early on when we like we're still getting to know each other. I was like, so do you like want me to ask you for like, if you need help or, and she was like, no, like it's fine. Cause like, it's you, but like, I'll ask you if I need help. And so I think that like, she also doesn't want to ever be treated different. So I think, I don't know, it's just cool. Like she just lives her life. Like she has two arms mm -hmm. and I think that's amazing. And I, I don't know. I just like fully respect that and look how far she's come and all the things that she's been able to do. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so amazing. I, I mean, I, I just love obviously following your story and, and the way Riley, you've supported her. And I feel like the whole team mm -hmm. too. So Carson, going back to you for people that like you mentioned, like it can be awkward. Like if there mm -hmm. are moments where it seems like you might need help, but you don't want to ask like for people who are, have never met someone with, you know, differing mm -hmm. abilities or a limb loss, like what is something that you want people to know more about or, you know, to make them feel a little bit more comfortable in talking about it and not having it be like some elephant in the room? You know, what, how do you think that that awareness can be, you know, spread? Yeah. I think just with so many other things as well, just conversations. Um, I feel like it's hard for me to tell people to have conversations when I won't even have conversations about it. And like, I, I, I do, I feel like that's not really fair for me to say, but um, I think if I can feel comfortable enough to talk to people about it, um, then hopefully the people around me feel comfortable to always ask me if I, not if I need help, but like if something is bothering them or um, they think I'm struggling and things like that, like I want people around me to feel comfortable talking to me about it. And mm. I, I'm very aware that it's not, it's not normal. Like, it's just not normal for someone to have one arm. And I think that even day to day when I'm out like shopping or anything, like I don't see people with one, one arm or one hand. Um, and I think the hardest thing for me, I will say was, was people staring. And for the longest time, it really bothered me. And not only did it bother me, I felt uncomfortable for the people that were with me. So like if Riley was at the mall with me and someone was staring at me, not only would it just make me feel uncomfortable, I would feel uncomfortable because it might make her feel uncomfortable. And that's like, it's awkward. And like, I, I never had the conversations with people around me. And, and it's something I've learned recently that um, I've asked people like, does it bother you if someone's staring at me and you're with me? Like, does that make you feel awkward? And I mean, people have different answers and stuff, but like, it just bothered me so much. And then I just had to come to the realization that there's just not many people with one, one arm. And so it's not that people are being rude. They just have never seen something like it, or they haven't experienced someone in their life that has one arm. And so I was able to be a little more understanding with that. And um, I just, when I'm by myself, I don't care. I don't care if people stare. I don't care if 
um, people are looking, but like when I'm with other people, it makes me feel pretty uncomfortable, um, even with some of my closest friends. And I think the biggest thing is just like having conversations about it um, in every situation. I think that I would respect someone who was staring at my arm, who I didn't know, a random stranger, instead of staring, I would respect them to come up and talk to me about it and like ask me about it because that's the only way people are going to learn is through conversations. Um, and I feel like people can watch things about it. Like, I don't know if there's like TV shows, like whatever, they can watch things about it. But until you talk to somebody um, who has one arm, you just like, you're not going to understand. You're not going to understand how it feels because people aren't staring at you because you have two hands and you look normal. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so I think just, yeah, just conversations. I think that it's really important um, for people with one arm to have conversations with the people around them, just because I think that's the only way to um, spread awareness about it. And I think I need to become better at that, being comfortable to have conversations with people. Um, but I just, I respect people like Riley just because sometimes, um, obviously she's my best friend, so it's a little easier, but she just will do something when she sees me struggling. And I, I do appreciate that, like without asking me, like sometimes it's nice to not be like, do you, do you need help? And I'm like, cause then I'm like, well, now it's a competition and no, I don't know. <laughs> but like, if, you're, if she just does things like at the airport, oh, uh, the airport is just like the biggest struggle for me. I have stuff everywhere and it's just like, it's so challenging, but um, like at the airport, she'll just like grab something if it, she sees me struggling. And I just like, love that. I love that. Like people in my life and people in my circle just get me. And I think that that is only going to happen if you have conversations about about it early. And she asked me early in our friendship, like, is does this bother you? Like, do you want me to do that? And um, like, she just knows me so well now. She like, she's like literally my sister. And yeah. I just appreciate that. But the only way that she knew, knows how to do things is from having conversations with me. And yes. I think that's really, really important. Yeah. Um, this is probably a different answer for anyone, but for you, you know, you say when someone's staring at you and you you'd prefer them to just strike strike up a conversation and ask like what is something someone could say to start that conversation yeah i've i mean i've had multiple people who a handful of people who have at who have come up and asked um and it tends to be people who have seen it before so i feel like they are a little more um comfortable with asking but i've had multiple people come up and say i would love to learn more about what happened to your arm and like just that question um, is so much better for some reason when someone's like, what happened to your arm? I just get so angry about it. And I'm like, oh, well, why do you have two hands? Like, I just get so mad because it just like, I don't know why it's, and I need to tone it down a little and not get mad at people. Cause I do appreciate them asking, <laughs> but just like when people ask me, I would, or say, I would love to learn more about it. I just respect that because it's not like they're just asking to ask, like they genuinely want to know what happened, how it happened and all the different things that I've like overcome and things like that. And I just appreciate that question so much more. Um, and that's something that as I've gotten older, I feel like having conversations with people has become easier. And so those are just the, the like a simple question like that is something I really, really would respect someone um, if they ask that. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell the intent behind it. It's not just like someone yeah. being nosy versus like genuine <laughs> curiosity. and, and yeah. Care. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So Riley, for you, from your perspective, obviously that's got a, a, amazing to hear, you know, Carson's perspective on how grateful she is for your support and, you know, focusing back on this month and, and celebrating this community for you. What advice do you have on, on someone who might have a loved one or might not have ever interacted with someone without a limb or experiencing something like this? Like what's your advice on understanding and still showing your support when you can't personally relate? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I think the one thing that like really helped our friendship was like, I was like so nervous to ask about like her arm early on because I was like, I didn't know if it was like a touchy subject, like we weren't super close yet. But I also just feel like the hard conversations are always worth having. And I feel like the uncomfortability of it, like you can get over that after you have that conversation. And like we just got so much closer after mm -hmm. that because I like took a genuine interest in her and like the thing, like she was saying, like the things like she's overcome and the things she can and can't do or like what she's comfortable with. And so I think just like, just remembering people are human, just like at the root of it all and just like caring, you know, I think that was like my intent behind asking. It wasn't like, Oh, like 
you know, what, what can't you do? Like, I, you know, like it was all out of like good faith. And I think that is something to just like always keep in mind that like people are just human and like people are sensitive, but also people like are comfortable enough with it to talk about it. And so I think that was, I think that's just like something to always fall back on is like people like love when other people are genuinely asking real questions about like who they are as people. So Mm -hmm. I think that's just something to remember just in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to flip the advice switch back over to you, Carson. And (laughs) as we wrap it up, I am curious what your advice is, not only for, you know, someone within your community who might be born without a limb, missing a limb, but also just in general, people who feel different and feel like there's something about them that's really different and they felt awkward and ashamed by it. But obviously I'm looking back at your Instagram post right now and the caption just says it so beautifully. Like you had experienced that, but now I mean, I'm sure not every day is perfect, but you do have this confidence now and you're willing to talk about it. And you say, you know, different people are my kind of people. <laughs> but what's your advice to someone who might still be having those tough days day after day to get to a place where you're at, where you are confident. Yes, you might have some bad days, but you you are at this place of peace to talk about it. Yeah, I mean, that's like a really good question um, because I I do know I do know people um, who do struggle with it. Um, specifically, someone um, back home they they just um, I feel like sometimes it's they're babying it a bit, and like that's really hard for me to see just because um, I think that you can do anything like you can do anything you want to do. And I don't think um, you, if you want to do something amazing, like you don't have time to feel sorry for yourself. And I think that that's something that I struggled with. I I just didn't understand why people can like figure it out and like have this confidence and just go do what they want to do. But there is a lot of people who are struggling and um, in life not even with limb difference, but, um, and I think that the biggest thing for me is, um, just creating a circle of people who really care about you. Um, I think that the people around me make everything okay. And like, if I'm out shopping and someone's staring at me and it kind of turns my day around, just knowing that I have people, no matter what happens to come home to, or to call, who love me for who I am. And I think that that's like the best advice I can give is just surround yourself with, with your kind of people. And luckily my kind of people are different. (laughs) Riley's different. Like everyone's just, and like someone texted me the other day and they're like, I just, and they're like, I love your little arm. And I just like, love that. Like, I just, I love when people feel confident to just say something that is maybe like a little nerve wracking to say, like, I just love it. And when that person said it, I was like, wow, you're different for saying that. Like I, and you know what I mean? Like, I just love when people are quirky and can be exactly who they want to be. And, um, they don't shy away from that. And that's the same with, with having one arm. Like it, it doesn't matter what you look like. And I think that that was really hard growing up. Um, it did seem like it mattered what you look like, you know, with girls and high school, like it's not always smooth sailing. And so I think that there's not much advice about that. Um, I, I've just learned um, through growing up in maturity that it just doesn't matter what you look like. Um, everyone has something that they're struggling with and sometimes you can see it and sometimes you can't. Um, and so just like being yourself no matter what and not changing for anyone. And I think that that's like the best advice I can give because um, we all have something and everyone's struggling deep down or maybe they show it. And I think that if you just keep your circle um, with all the people that build you up every day, it's really, really important. (laughs) My tissues out here. (laughs) Well, like just to wrap it up, I know we didn't get to touch on this a lot, but tell us a little bit about Lucky Finn and Mm. how people can learn more about this and, and show their support. Yeah. So, um, lucky Finn project is their Instagram and their Twitter. And a couple years ago, um, the founder of it reached out to me because they live close to Chicago and it was when I was in Orlando and she was like, Oh, um, like I started this company, it's called lucky Finn project. And I would love for you to be just a part of it. And we're going to come to the Chicago game. I'd love to speak to you about it. My little daughter's coming. She has the same arm as you. And, Um, I remember just being so excited to to talk to her, um, and even talk to the little girl, just because I knew it was a company 
or a foundation that I could get behind because it literally is the exact same thing that I'm going through. Um, and I just, I, I have met so many people through them. And I think um, everywhere I've played, I think I've met a little kid or someone with one arm through them. So I think that they just spread awareness in the most amazing way. And um, they, they show off people's limb difference. And I just love that. I love when people um, just don't care what their Instagram looks like or their Twitter looks like. And it's just a bunch of people with one arm. And I just love that. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, they're amazing. And I connect with them often. Um, I try and go speak sometimes, but I'm not, I haven't been able to do it just because it's during July and it's, mm. we're busy, That's but cool. um, yeah, they're amazing. They're an amazing company um, foundation. And I think that they're doing amazing things. And that's actually how I met Joseph, the little boy in Orlando. So um, they're spreading awareness and doing great. So definitely check them out. I think that they put a lot of good content up just to help um, people understand more. Awesome. Well, yeah, everyone listening, check them out. Check out Riley and Carson's Instagram. <laughs> coffee recommendations as well. You guys have, I think, probably tried every coffee place. Right. About. You know, we got yes. you in the coffee department. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I feel like we could have a whole other podcast episode about this. But anyway, <laughs> we got to wrap it up here. Thank you guys so much for coming on the show. And yeah, go enjoy the rest Thanks of your time. Thanks for having us. I appreciate it. It means a lot. Coming up on Courage on the Pitch. All right. Thanks, Carson and Riley, for joining us on the show. Uh, let's do a quick preview of what's coming up for the Courage. They are back at it with the Challenge Cup this weekend on Saturday. They're going to be on the road taking on Orlando Pride. Uh, this is at uh, 7 o'clock on Saturday, and that kicks off at 7 p.m. So tune in on Paramount+. Plus, and then the Courage will return home for their final regular Challenge Cup. I guess it's a regular season uh, of the Challenge Cup match before. They potentially make it to the playoffs for the Challenge Cup champion, championship, but the Courage will return home on April 23rd uh, to take on Washington Spirit, uh, and that is going to be on the big CBS Sports Network on TV, but also get your tickets to be there in person. I think it's uh, a little cooler to watch it live. Um, TV's great as well, but uh, get your tickets for that match on April 23rd as well. And yeah, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the podcast, and also you can watch us on 99.9 The Fans' YouTube channel or on WRAL Sports Plus uh, on Thursday nights at 9 p.m. That's a mouthful. But thanks again for listening and hope you have a great weekend. Courage on the Pitch with Megan O'Keefe is part of the Capital Broadcasting Podcast Network with new shows available every Thursday on WRALsportsfan.com or wherever you get your podcasts.